The first prerequisite concept that we need to understand is matrix similarity. Now, matrix similarity means something very specific. Okay, if we consider so, if we consider two different matrices A and B, for simplicity throughout this video, we're just going to assume they're square, even though I put M by N on here. But but like, consider we have two matrices A and B. Uh, we can only say that these two matrices, A and B, are similar if an invertible X matrix exists such that this relationship between matrix A and matrix B holds. So if we have matrix A and we compute the matrix product of uh, X inverse by B by X, that's why X needs to be invertible, and we get back our A matrix, then A and B are similar. We can flip A and B around. We could also uh, similarly compute uh, X by B by X inverse. Matrices are only similar if this relationship holds. If matrix A and matrix B are of the same shape, that's not enough to say that they're similar. If they both all have real values or both all have complex values, they're not similar. If they're both upper triangular, if they're both lower triangular, if they're both uh, diagonal matrices, that does not necessarily mean that the matrices are similar. This relationship has to hold. And that's particularly important because if A and B are similar matrices, they will share a number of the same uh, values or qualities. So, so they will share the same rank. They will share the same determinant. They will share the same trace. There are numerous of uh, the, these qualities that they will share. But most importantly, they will share the same eigenvalues. And this idea of matrix similarity and the fact that the similar matrices will share the same eigenvalues is a crucial piece of information that we can leverage to our advantage in computing eigenvalues. Okay, so the second crucial bit of prerequisite information that we're going to uh, need to understand with uh, some of these numerical methods for computing eigenvalues is the sure decomposition. And it's not so much the sure decomposition itself that we need to understand, but rather uh, a little bit of information that we get from a derivation of the sure decomposition that's going to be helpful to us. And so uh, before getting into the sure decomposition, uh, let me quickly go over some decompositions for you. We, uh, the, one of the first matrix decompositions that uh, I hope you're all familiar with is the Lu decomposition, and with that we saw that we could decompose it further into LDV. These are the first like two kind of discussions that I've done on uh, matrix decompositions. Then for positive definite matrices, uh, there's the Cholesky matrix decomposition, which has its own bit of advantages, and we could decompose that further into LDL transpose. But most recently, uh, in these linear algebra discussions, we discussed the QR matrix decomposition. And uh, let me just have you guess quickly uh, what the Schur matrix decomposition is going to be. Well, it's going to be a three matrix uh, or uh, a further decomposition of QR into three matrices. And so that's just what I kind of want to motivate this all by. Um, and so we'll start off with this kind of derivation that's going to be useful to us by just assuming we have some square A matrix that we can compute a QR matrix decomposition for. I'll remind you that the benefit of the QR matrix decomposition is the orthonormal matrix Q because of this particular identity right here, which is that when we compute Q by Q transpose or Q transpose by Q, we get back the identity matrix, implying to us that Q transpose is really Q inverse, which is very, very useful, especially numerically, because we don't actually have to compute an inverse. I specifically have not done any discussions on computing matrix inverses as it's very much more in the weeds, in my opinion, than computing eigenvalues. And uh, therefore, computing inverses really ought to be avoided whenever possible. And so if we can use an orthonormal matrix and just you know transpose it and then get the inverse, that's extremely beneficial to us. So let's set that all aside uh, and um, you know highlight that important bit of information. But uh, again, setting that aside, what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, suppose that we compute some new matrix B with uh, RQ, which we got from our QR decomposition of, of A. So we're just going to you know flip those around, compute B, and now this is where things are going to get a little bit interesting. We're going to left multiply both sides here by our identity matrix. On the left-hand side, that really doesn't do anything. It doesn't really matter. We can just, you know, say that's still our B matrix. And so now we have B is equal to the identity matrix by R by Q. But remember, our identity here from before for uh, orthonormal 
matrices. Uh, the I is Q by Q transpose or Q transpose by Q. Let's substitute Q transpose by Q right in there. And what you'll notice right here is that we have Q transpose by Q by R by Q. And uh, that's really just Q inverse by Q by R by Q. And if you'll notice, we have this QR right in the middle of these four matrices. And the product of that is our A matrix. And so we can just substitute that in right there. And if we look at this very, very closely, this that B is equal to Q inverse by A by Q, this is actually telling us that our Q matrix satisfies our requirement of an invertible X matrix such that this is proving to us that A and B are similar matrices. If we put them side by side and look at one another from what we had before, it's very clear that our Q matrix in this case is that invertible X matrix such that B and A or A and B are similar matrices and therefore they will share a number of the same qualities. Most importantly though, they will share the same eigenvalues and that's going to be very useful for us. And so if we go back here and you know right to everything that we've done and we go all the way back up to the top of this kind of derivation that we've done, one such way that we can compute a similar matrix for uh, some given A matrix is we can just compute a QR matrix decomposition, flip the Q and the R around, compute the product RQ, set that equal to uh, you know some new matrix variable, and that new matrix variable in this case B will be our similar matrix to A. Okay, but uh, don't just take my word for it. Let's test this out uh, for ourselves. Let's use this knowledge that we've got from of similar matrices and uh, the, what we got through this derivation of the uh, sure decomposition uh, to uh, investigate and, and show uh, that uh, matrix A and matrix B or two similar matrices will share the same eigenvalue. So here you can see this block of code. Again, you can find it all at the GitHub link in the description of this video. We are going to generate a random 3 by 3 A matrix with values between 0 and 100. We're going to use the NumPy linalg eig function to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for that A matrix. Then what we're going to do is we are going to compute a QR matrix decomposition of that original uh, randomly generated A matrix. And then we'll compute a similar matrix with uh, our R and Q matrices computing the product uh, RQ. And then we will use the same NumPy linalg eig function on that similar matrix to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Although this is a broader discussion on numerical methods for computing eigenvalues in a conventional world, you're going to, at least in Python, you're going to be using the NumPy linalg eig function to compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors. You're not necessarily going to be using the methods that we will discuss uh, later on in, in, you know, in this discussion. That's not the, the motivation of this discussion. The motivation of this discussion is to understand these numerical methods and uh, just understand how they work and, and explore them. So let me go ahead and run this code. This is what the terminal output uh, will kind of look like. Here you can see at the top we have our A matrix, all different values. You can see it's clearly not uh, symmetric in any way, all you know, random values 3 by 3. Uh, our eigenvalues for our A matrix are 159 and some change, negative 29 and some change, and 35 and some change. Now, our similar matrix B, which is the product RQ, you can see is very clearly different from our A matrix. But when we compute the eigenvalues for this B matrix, you can see they are exactly the same. And again, I'll refer you back to this code. Um, we're not doing anything crazy or different here. Two very different uh, matrices, but they are similar matrices, and so they do share the same eigenvalue. 